Hi everybody, today is January 23rd, 2013. Anyone who received the H1N1 flu vaccine back in 2009 should be aware of this. This vaccine was distributed to 47 countries. Bird flu vaccine linked to rise in narcolepsy among children. Emily is plagued by hallucinations and nightmares. When she wakes up, she is often paralyzed, unable to breathe properly or call for help. During the day, she can barely stay awake and often misses school or having fun with friends. She is only 14, but at times she wonders if her life is worth living. Emily is one of some 800 children in Sweden and elsewhere in Europe who developed narcolepsy, an incurable sleep disorder, after being given the pandemic's H1N1 swine flu vaccine made by British drug maker GlaxoSmithKline GSK, in 2009. Finland, Norway, and Ireland, and France have seen spikes in narcolepsy cases, too. And people familiar with the result of the soon-to-be-published study in Britain said it would show a similar pattern in children there. Their fate, coping with an illness that all but destroys normal life, is developing into what the health official who coordinated Sweden's vaccination campaign calls a medical tragedy that will demand attention. Europe's drugs regulator has ruled that Pandrix will no longer be used in people under 20. The chief medical officer at GSK's vaccine division, Norman Begg, said his firm viewed the issue extremely serious and was absolutely committed to getting to the bottom of this and added there was not yet enough data or evidence to suggest a casual link. Others, including Dr. Emmanuel Mingen, one of the world's leading experts on narcolepsy, who is being funded by GSK to investigate further. Agreed more research is needed, but says the evidence is already clearly pointing to one direction. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that Pandrix increased the occurrence of narcolepsy onset in children in some countries, and probably in most countries, said Ming Not, a specialist in the sleep disorder at U.S.-based Stanford University. In total, the GSK shot was given to more than 30 million people in 47 countries during the 2009-2010 H1N1 swine flu pandemic. It was not registered for use in Hong Kong. According to GSK, 795 people across Europe have reported developing narcolepsy since the vaccine use began in 2009, but experts on all sides are worried. Rare adverse reactions can swiftly develop into vaccine scares that spiral out of control. No one wants to be the next Wakefield, said Ming Not, referring to the now discredited British doctor, Andrew Wakefield, who sparked a decades-long backlash against the measles, mumps, and rebellion, MMR shot, with false claims of links to autism. What they don't mention here is that the DPP shot has been pulled and is now being replaced with a new vaccine because the DTP shot they're finally admitting has adverse reactions. With the narcolepsy study, there is no suggestions that the findings are the work of one rogue doctor. Independent teams of scientists have published peer-reviewed studies from Sweden, Finland, and Ireland showing the risk of developing narcolepsy after the 2009-2010 immunization campaign was between 7 and 13 times higher for children who had pandemics than for their unvaccinated peers. Emily's parents, Charles and Marie Olson, said her life started to change in early 2010, a few months after she had the pandemics. In spring of 2010, they noticed that she was often tired and needed to sleep when she came home from school. In May, she began collapsing at school, as well as bouts of daytime sleepiness, narcolepsy brings nightmares, hallucinations, sleep paralysis, and episodes of cataplexy when strong emotions trigger a sudden and dramatic loss of muscle strength. In Emily's case, having fun is the emotional trigger. I can't laugh or joke about with my friends anymore because when I do, I get cataplexies and collapse, she said. Narcolepsy has no known cure and scientists do not really know what causes it, but they do know patients have a defect of the brain neurotransmitter called orexin, also known as hypercratin, which regulates wakefulness. When Emily's hypercratin levels were tested last November, she had only 15% of the normal amount, typical of heavy narcolepsy. In the beginning, I didn't really want to live anymore, but now I've learned to handle things better, she said. Scientists investigating these cases are looking into in detail 
a pandemics booster called AS03 for clues. Some suggest AS03 or its booster effect or even the H1N1 flu itself may have triggered the onset of narcolepsy in those with a susceptible gene variant. Angus Nicole, a flu expert at the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, said genes might well play a part, but did not tell the whole story. Yes, there's genetic predispositions, but that alone cannot explain these cases, he said. There was something to do with receiving this vaccine. And yes, you heard me right. The DTP shot, which was given for over 50 years, is now being pulled with a different type of drug added for the P, the persistence. That's the part that caused the autism and deaths in the children. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep everyone up to date. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. I'm Graham Olkins. Thank you for being with us tonight. We begin with new video of a major bubbling site near the sinkhole in Assumption Parish. Officials tell Nine News it is the biggest pool they've seen yet. WAP's Cheryl Mercedes reports for some living in the area, the boils have gotten a little too close for comfort. You're looking at what some folks in Bayou Corn refer to as the mother of all bubbles. It's the most active bubbling pool the Assumption Parish Office of Emergency Preparedness reports it has seen. This map of Bayou Corn shows the sinkhole in the shape of a circle, the new bubbling site next to it. The community yep. some 3,000 feet away. Uh, the, Nick Romero has seen bubbling in uh, his own yard. A little scary because now I'd you know, I know it's all around me. He knew it was only a matter of time before the evidence would surface after gas was detected on his property. It's a, identified that there's a, uh, a gas zone down below my property here, and it's uh, somewhere near 25 to 35 foot down. Romero's only comfort is the air monitor attached to the outside of his work shed and the gas monitors inside. The parish has been reading the monitors and double-checking Texas Brine's work. Homeowner Mike Schaff says he has lost faith in Texas Brine. What you're saying is that it was no detectable levels of, uh, of uh, hydrocarbons when they were doing the testing. They said that for, for several weeks until the uh, sinkhole collapsed, and then they changed it tune. It was... Uh, within a few weeks, they said it was uh, thermogenic. Meaning it was coming from a natural gas source. Residents say they're not so sure anyone is going to fix the problem. Some are convinced Mother Nature has already taken over. They want the state to step up. I'm not so much worried about having the governor come down here and, and you know, have a handshaking you know, session. I'd like to see him put a little more pressure on them, you know, to get to get them to move on getting the residents that want to get bought out get us out of here texas brine has installed vent wells to flare the gas but residents fear they won't work fast enough to keep the pressure from building in the bayou and honestly i don't think they're, they they know the problem cheryl mercedes wafb 9 news a spokesman for texas brine says the company just got the right-of-way agreements to start building a road which will allow them to install at least three more vent wells between Bayou Corn and the sinkhole. That process is expected to start this week. NRC event notification report for January 23, 2013, Fermi Nuclear Generating Station. Secondary containment pressure positive for 12 seconds. Background. The Fermi Nuclear Generating Station is a nuclear power plant on Lake Erie, in Michigan. It is approximately halfway between Detroit, Michigan and Toledo, Ohio. 
Two units have been constructed on this site. The first unit's construction started in 1963, and the second unit reached criticality in 1988. In 1966, Fermi 1, a prototype fast breeder reactor, suffered a partial fuel meltdown. After repairs it was shut down by 1972. Following an extended shutdown that involved fuel replacement, repairs to vessel, and cleanup, Fermi 1 continued to operate intermittently until 1972, but was never again able to reach a fully operational state. It was officially decommissioned in 1975. It is currently in so-called safe storage with a gradual final decommissioning in progress. During safe storage the day-fueled plant is monitored for up to 60 years before complete decontamination and dismantling of the site to a condition where nuclear licensing is no longer required. Fermi 2 is a General Electric boiling water reactor owned by DTE Energy and operated by subsidiary Detroit Edison. In 2010 a tornado touched down and damaged the Fermi 2 generator building and forced an automatic shutdown. In December 2011 the nonpartisan organization Public Campaign criticized DTE Energy for spending $4,370,000 on lobbying and not paying any taxes during 2008 to 2010, instead getting $17 million in tax rebates. Despite making a profit of $2,500,000,000, in 2008 Detroit Edison filed an application with the NRC for a combined construction and operating license for a third reactor. The new unit is supposed to be built on the same site slightly to the southwest of Fermi 2. The reactor design selected is the GE-designed Passive Economic Simplified Boiling Water Reactor. The cost was estimated at as much as $10 billion. In March 2009 a coalition of citizen groups asked federal regulators to reject plans for Fermi 3, contending that it would pose a range of threats to public health and the environment. The groups have filed 14 contentions with the NRC claiming that a new plant would pose radioactive, toxic and thermal impacts on Lake Erie's vulnerable western basin. Loss of Secondary Containment Function On January 22, 2013 reactor building HVAC trip due to low outside air temperature and standby gas treatment system was manually started and maintained. Reactor building differential pressure negative. Subsequently, secondary containment pressure went positive during restart of the center reactor building HVAC train. This constituted a loss of secondary containment function. The loss of secondary containment function is reportable as an event or condition that could have prevented the fulfillment of a safety function needed to control the release of radioactive material. Live, this is one for the record, I'm Diana, and today is January 24th, 2013. It is Thursday, the eve of Friday, and here are your updates for today. Let's go to the E&E &E News. We'll do that one first. We'll go into uh, Japan, Fukushima. Let's see if we can get up in there. We'll do that one first today. Here, let's lower just, just a little bit. There you go. Wow. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. All right. Here we go. Prosecutors question ex TEPCO chairman over Fukushima, accused of being responsible for the injury from radiation exposure. 
Also today, Reuters, Japan faces nuclear shutdown for a second time since Fukushima. Experts, they're trying to protect their nation from diseases death. Also today, TEPCO, we are planning to dump water from Fukushima plant into Pacific Ocean. Heads up on that one. Let me read that one again. Let me move this down a little. TEPCO, we are planning to dump water from Fukushima plant into Pacific Ocean. Has, haven't they been doing that already? Also, TV. Radiation levels nearby doubled in Fukushima soil sample over five months period. Also, today, Asashi. New 311 footage shows disaster loomed at Fukushima reactor number five. Wow. A lot of reactors over there. Alrighty then. Let's go into U.S. Canada. Today's flyover giant sinkhole release shows new access road being built on edge of subsidized zone. Also today, report News that reactor vessel fell off train kept secret for nearly a month. Now sits outside under a tarp in Georgia and seems to be partially open to, el to the elements. And I said that yesterday. Just heads up. Told you be prepared for anything. Alright, let's go into the watchers watching the world. Solar prominences on January 23rd. 2013, all right, that might be from yesterday then, volcanic activity at Revendor Peaks, correlator supercomputer built for largest ground-based telescope, Earth gamma ray blasters, that's it, let's get rid of that, the extinction protocol 2012 and beyond. I'm not keeping you long because I know I put, I'm attaching a couple videos ahead of time. So, I'm going as fast through this as I can. Antibiotic resistant diseases pose apocalyptic threat, top experts says. Alright, just remember, try to carry some of that alcohol bacteria stuff. Try to keep hygiene uh, going on. Be careful. Lightning linked to onset of headache migraines. Unprecedented glacier melting in the Andes blamed on climate change. Heads up, climate change. Seismic swarm at Chile's Copuhu volcano increases likelihood of new, er, new eruptions. All right, the rest I read before. Okay, we're at the eve of Friday. We're almost there. Hang in there. So it's four days down, one to go before the weekend. And I'll see you again tomorrow. On the flip side, take care. Always be prepared. And try to stay out of crowds of people coughing all over you. And if you can avoid going... In, uh, into the hospital where all the sick people are that might be a good idea alrighty then if not then soon, you know keep washing your hands keep putting the uh, carry a little bottle of that uh, bacteria stuff that you don't need water for and just keep you know you're touching handles doorknobs whatever you're touching and maybe you can keep a little thing of your own Kleenex too, so your hand doesn't touch the door. Keep a little bit of paper towels in your in, in your pocket or purse. So when you come up to a door that a hundred people have touched and maybe not have washed their hands, use your paper. And then throw your paper out. And then also use the bacterial stuff. Alright? Take care. And I'll see you tomorrow. Just always be prepared for anything.